Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Denovan's Facebook Live. Uh, this week, we have the lovely Mick from Ladybird Conveyancing, who will be joining us just to basically answer a few questions in relation to uh, all things conveyancing. So uh, if you're looking at buying or selling your property, uh, this is definitely going to be of value to you. Um, so first of all, I'd like to thank Mick for being with us. Thanks, Mick. Thanks, Hayden. Thanks for having me. Thank you, gentlemen. That's all right. So um, I think first of all, Mick's got a little bit of a standard disclaimer for us to go through. Yes. Um, so far away. Yeah. <laughs> so we just wanted to make sure you know that the following information that we're going to have a little bit of a discussion on, it's not actually legal advice. It will be something that's just of interest to you potentially. So we highly suggest talking to a legal practitioner directly just because each circumstance is different and we want to make sure you get the right tailored advice. For sure. Well oh, said. Thank well you. said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to jump right into it, uh, we've got a bunch of questions so you guys know how this works. So, a bunch of questions for Meg to run through, um, which, as I said, I'm sure if you're looking at buying or selling now or into the future, is going to give you a bunch of value. So, um, just to kick right off, um, Mick, what sort of checks should I make sure I'm doing um, to make sure that I'm sort of hiring someone that's reputable in the conveyancing? You know, sector. Yes, yeah, so that's a really interesting question, um, especially that I just want to clarify with you in terms of yeah. how firms position themselves. So some brand themselves as law firms, as solicitors, as conveyances, mm. but in Queensland, it's actually the legal, I guess, um, responsibility to practice conveyancing. It's a requirement to have a Queensland solicitor. Yeah. So that's actually the um, law society, a Queensland law society. So the license number is probably a good reference. Right. I guess at Ladybird Conveyancing, we are a law firm that specializes in conveyancing. That's how simple it is. Yeah. So just to confirm what the differences are, because you're probably here solicitor, law firm conveyancer but in Queensland yeah. you're definitely governed by the fact that they're a legal practitioner with a law society license right okay yeah. so that's something to look out for yes yeah yep. excellent that's good because uh, yeah, it is quite confusing as you said um, yeah. you know, if you're not in the game there's a lot of different terms that are used out there and thrown around so yeah. that's a good little tip for us mm -hmm. and um, can I self-act as a buyer or seller Yes, so you can. Um, however, it's something to be really conscious of in terms of the level of work, yep. the communication, uh, making sure that you're available all the time to respond back to. Uh, I guess the time frames are very specific in a legal and real estate area. Yeah. Uh, making sure that if you do choose to self-act, there can be some major miscommunications by virtue of lack of experience, which can be quite costly. Yeah. Um, so being aware as well from a buyer's perspective, there's actually more responsibilities throughout the process um, in purchasing property. So something to be very conscious of as a buyer, the time restraints, miscommunications, the cost mm. potentially, and also your availability throughout the whole day. For sure, for <laughs> sure. And, and can I just add, uh, from my experience as well, dealing with um, you know uh, the process time and time again, as you can imagine, um, I definitely recommend that all of my clients go and see um, someone like yourself, um, who is a great communicator as well, keeps in the loop with the whole process. But I just think for the value for money that you guys deliver at the end of the day, it's not worth the risk. Um, that's just from my personal sort of um, two cents worth, I guess. Yeah, I'm uh, sure you've yeah. seen some horror stories. I'm <laughs> sure of it. Yeah, we won't go into them, but yeah, there has <laughs> been uh, there's been a few yeah. Um, that yeah have been sort of mismanaged over the years. So um, that's just my two cents worth. But look, um, I think you have answered the next two or the next question. Why am I best to engage a solicitor? Did you want? Did you no, want exactly like you said. So yeah. all of those risks, I guess, yeah. in potentially is paying such a small fee or a small charge mm. to have those potentially removed. It, it's a no-brainer from yeah. our end of things, and I'm sure from yours as well. For sure, hundred percent. And uh, when this is a good one, actually, when am I best um, to engage a solicitor conveyancer? Yeah. Um, when am I best to? to really that? important. So yep. really important. So making sure you do that prior to signing the contract. Yeah. Uh, so we'll definitely take a look at the contract to make sure it is exactly as you need it. But definitely prior to signing that contract. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yep. And then, um, what will a solicitor do for me throughout the sale process? So, um, you know, before I have a contract, what are some of the things you guys do? during and then you know potentially after settlement can you run us through some of those things as well yeah sure so especially like we just spoke about with pre 
signing in terms yeah. of the special conditions, which we think we go into a little later on, but making sure if there's anything over the property you want to have a special search on. Yeah. Um, so this, again, we talk about engaging with the conveyancer is that it removes the risk from the yeah. transaction. The communication, like you spoke about, and making sure that open dialogue on a basic level is given to your client. Yeah. Um, so it's also liaising with both parties, preparing documentation, which is really important to get mm. it correct. Yeah. Also during the process as well, making sure the buyer does and inherit any of that money from the seller side of things so they can be quite costly yes, um, yes. and also you mentioned about after settlement majority of the time um, our transaction ends at settlement yeah that's the usual process something to be conscious of yeah for yeah. sure yep okay when the keys are handed over and happy days from there beautiful okay excellent and then um, so can I ask my conveyancer to add special conditions in the contract for me yes so we just spoke yep. about that so yep. making sure that this is inserted prior to signing the contract so really important if there's something you're thinking of engaging with your real estate letting them know but definitely from a conveyancer's perspective to make sure it's included in the contract for sure okay mm -hmm. and again that's something I've had previous experience with whereby um, particularly you know um, from a seller's perspective I've run into a few things whereby um, you know, conveyances like yourself have advised uh, on things such as, um, and we won't necessarily need to go into this tonight, but um, things such as, um, you know, you know, occupying the property prior to settlement and the risk involved with that type of thing. So um, there are some hidden things that, you know, from a seller's perspective, if you are self-acting, you might think, look, that's fine, I'll let the buyer, you know, sort of move in a week or two early and then, um, you know, sort of as, as we know, there's some some considerations there, I suppose, to risk assess um, when when making those sort of decisions. So yeah. that's where you guys come involved and, yes. and sort of advise on that. So uh, moving on, um, as a buyer, what sort of property searches should I be asking uh, my conveyancer to do? Yeah, so that's actually specific to each individual. So yeah. uh, it's basically that there's a minimum amount of searches, which we're more than happy to discuss, mm -hmm. but it's actually based upon the location of the property and also the buyer's understanding of the area. So yeah. every single property is going to be different, basically. So definitely worth engaging with a solicitor, conveyance, or that sort of thing um, to make sure that those alternative searches are discussed and yeah. it covers exactly their needs. So yeah, it's, it's there's a minimum amount, but there's also other ones applicable to the property. Depending on where it is. And where it is yeah, and what they know. And yeah. those sorts of things. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And um, as a seller by hiring a solicitor, do I remove all liability for representations made about the property by me or my agent? No. 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 That's a stern no. <laughs> I can't just put your head in the sand and think, look, it's all no. good. Um, I've got an agent, I've got a solicitor, it's all fine. Yeah, big yeah. no. Yeah, no, no, that's fair, that's good. Um, and will my solicitor communicate with my bank real estate agent through the process? Absolutely. At Ladybird, we will. So yeah. it's definitely something that we, um, as a business, pride ourselves on. So that's yeah. definitely the communication that we have. For sure. Mm. Yeah. And from an agent's perspective as well, um, you know, obviously dealing with you guys as well a fair bit. Um, text messages uh, are quite a frequent use in your business, which I find personally, you know, quite good when you're on the run. Um, yeah. You know, to be able to just get an update that finance is all good or, or building and pests is, is all uh, all heading in the right direction is, is definitely useful as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, that's that's something I can vouch for for sure. Mm -hmm. um, now, how much should I pay to hire a conveyancing solicitor to act for me? Yeah, so this is another one that's very in flux that it can be pretty yeah. much anything, it varies. Mm. Um, so we at Ladybird have made our pricing completely transparent, it's all available online. So it's something to be conscious of that the fees will change actually based on the council. So especially on this north side, we've yes. got Morton Bay, which is a different pricing to Brisbane. Yeah. Um, more than welcome to use ours as a potential guide, so it's all available. I'll give you that a little later on for our website. Yep. But yeah, all our pricing there, 24-7, able to be seen. Yeah. But the virtue that the searches are charged differently per council is why that the charges may be different so very to very. There as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. And um, give us a bit of a sales plug. Yeah. Uh, why should I hire, if I'm a buyer or a seller out there, why should I hire you guys? Okay, so especially with, at the moment, with a few of the different conveyances and solicitors priding themselves on being a uh, fixed fee, but it's not necessarily the case. So we at Ladybird have made ourselves a guaranteed fee. So that's inclusive of the searches, it's the settlement fee, you're not getting in charge for phone calls. Um, it's something to be conscious of that it is the guaranteed fee, so very yeah. different. Uh, as well, our communication and just our understanding that this is really exciting or it's really nerve-wracking just 
misunderstanding of talking to real people, I think, is massive in this um, space. Mm. We understand that you need to be spoken to in a way that's not legal jargon, which yeah. I know I can relate to because it can be very daunting mm. and very confusing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've got that. We've just got a simple process. Uh, also, you can do everything electronically. Um, being that we understand you're busy, that you've got things on, the nine to five doesn't always work. So we make sure that you can complete the whole transaction electronically as well. Excellent. So simple. Yeah. So um, why not? Well, that's this is it. <laughs> and I get to do it with you, of course, Mick, yeah, as well. So <laughs> part and parcel. Win-win. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And uh, for anyone watching that does want to get in contact with you guys, so yeah. uh, can you give us to website contact details how we best yes, do that yes yes so we might actually add it below in the comments at the yes. end of it as well so it's yeah. direct but i actually really suggest going to our facebook page so ladybird conveyancing on facebook you can see a stack of reviews in terms of that premium service i just spoke about yep. um, looking at the real people that have had real results and a really good process um, our we website being www.ladybirdconveyancing.com.au so we'll whack that below also the contact details and general email address down the bottom as well to make sure you've got that easy peasy. Awesome. All sounds too easy, Mick. So easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, too easy. Well, look, I really appreciate you joining us tonight. Yeah. And um, can I just say, look, from my experience dealing with ladybird conveyancing and particularly Mick, we've had a relationship for a fair while now. Um, I can say they do make it very, very easy uh, for our clients uh, and customers, whether that be buying or selling. And um, the communication on all levels has been um, been really good uh, as well, I've found. So I would you know, strongly urge you if you are buying now or even if you are um, looking at potentially looking at buying or selling into the near future, it'd be a great idea just to get in touch with these guys. Have a bit of a chat, clarify any questions that you may have um, because I know it's a huge process uh, whether you are buying or selling. Uh, it is, you know, can be very daunting as well. So we we'll strongly urge you to get in, in touch with uh, Mick and the team oh, and uh, they'll be all too happy to, uh, to help out in any way they can. And uh, from our end, really appreciate you joining us tonight and uh, hope you've got some huge value out of tonight. And uh, we'll be back next week, uh, Tuesday night. Thank you.